If you've ever worked with the LERP method in Unity, you might know that it's used to interpolate between two numbers, A and B, based on a third number, T, which goes between 0 and 1. This is known as linear interpolation. We start from the value of T on the x-axis, draw a line vertically until we hit the diagonal, and we draw a line to the left until we hit the y-axis. And whatever number we hit is our result. But what happens when we have a curve instead of the diagonal? Well, this is still interpolation, but it's not very linear anymore. The math for nonlinear interpolation becomes a little bit more tricky, but that's when Unity's animation curve comes in handy. It allows us to do the exact same thing as lerping, but we get to draw the line however we want. The output is still calculated in the same way. Draw a line from the x-axis until you hit the curve and go left to find your answer. One of the many uses of this kind of interpolation is in terrain generation, since linear interpolation can give you some very uninteresting results. I wrote a simple function which generates terrain based on Perl and noise output, and this is the most common way of generating terrain, but it can be a little bit too smooth, and there's not much variation in steepness of the hills. But if we change the generator to put the Perl and noise output through our curve function, and then generate the terrain, we might get something a bit more interesting. As you can see, the terrain is still randomly generated, but it follows the form of our curve. You can, of course, add regular Perl and noise on top of your initial layer to make the terrain a bit more diverse and to add more variation and randomness. But for right now, I just wanted to show the method for creating the first layer. One very common use of this method of generation is where you want to define the sea level of your terrain. You might want some flat space between the shore and the mountains, so you could draw a flat line separating the ocean from the hills. Note that the terrain I'm generating here is on a very small scale so that I can show it all in one screen. So the way I'm able to get my Perlin noise values to adjust to the curve I drew is very simple. After I get my Perlin value, I pass it on through my curves function called evaluate, and then I pass it over to the terrain. The evaluate function does the exact same thing I explained in the beginning, where my Perlin noise value is the t parameter, and what it gives me is the value from the y-axis. Of course, on its own, this method gives a very predictable result, but my idea here is to then randomize the values using Perlin noise. This way, I can get some chaotic terrain, but still predictable enough so I can control stuff like the sea level and the overall shape of the mountains. Here's what I managed to achieve using only Perlin noise to generate terrain. It's nice enough, but it's hard to adjust the amount of flat land I'm getting, and the algorithm almost never creates stuff like glyphs and sharp edges. I'm now going to integrate this functionality into my algorithm to see what kind of effect I can achieve. I'm also going to randomize the amount of influence the curve has on my terrain so that uh, I still get some areas where the terrain is smooth and some areas where there will be more cliffs and steep slopes. Here are some of the cool features I managed to generate. 